welcome to our homework video this week. It's our last homework of the year, so I'm glad you made it all the way through. This week, we're going to be talking about our last project. In class, you guys are going to be designing solutions to reduce the impacts of humans on biodiversity. So let's get started. When we're talking about biodiversity, we really need to talk about ecosystems. An ecosystem is really our way of just describing complex interaction of living organisms. We've been doing a lot of work already in class using food webs, which show all of these interactions. And you can see how some organisms eat other organisms and how the energy and the nutrients and matter travel around from organism to organism and can get be recycled back into the plants by decomposers. Now, food webs are typically very stable. If one organism gets removed, then the other organisms might be impacted, but they'll usually adjust and continue to be able to live. Even if you have some small changes in temperature or the amount of salt in salt water or the amount of sunlight or acidity, all of those things might cause a food web to change a little bit, but usually these ecosystems are very stable. Small changes don't have that big of an effect and the ecosystem will return to its original state. However, large changes might permanently change the entire food web. In recent times, humans are a major contributor to change in ecosystems. We call these anthropogenic changes. Anthro means human, genic means made. So these are human-made changes. One example of an anthropogenic change is habitat destruction, as you can see in this picture. The forests have been cut down in order to remove the wood for logging so we can use it as timber or to make paper or maybe even to turn this land into farms. Or it might even be accidental if we started a forest fire. Another example of an anthropogenic change is pollution. In this map, you can see the amount of pollution that is being produced by human causes. Uh, the darker red areas are higher concentrations of nitrous oxide, which is a toxic pollutant made by human cars and factories. And you might think that anywhere where there are a lot of people, there is a lot of pollution. And that is true for places like in China and Europe and North America. However, there's also a lot of people in India and Africa, and they aren't producing the same amount of pollution. And why might that be? It may come down to how people live. Some countries have good laws that prevent as much pollution to be put out, and sometimes People live in a different way where they don't burn as many fossil fuels and don't have as many factories and therefore don't cause as much pollution. Another example of a change caused by human is invasive species. Because humans travel all over the world, we end up taking organisms with us. Sometimes we do this on purpose, other times on accident, but the organisms that travel with us can have profound impacts in the new ecosystem where they live. This picture here is an example of a plant called kudzu. Now, it originally evolved in Japan and was transported around um, to various places around the world on purpose because we liked the way it looked in our gardens. However, when it was introduced into new ecosystems, it thrived, killing most of the plants. In Japan, kudzu would only grow in really rocky soils near volcanoes. Those volcanoes would erupt, covering the land in lava. Kudzu evolved to have really tough roots that stayed alive, even if it was buried deep under rock. And eventually it would grow new shoots and roots that would break through the rock and continue to live. Now, it was in a balance when it was in this very tough terrain in Japan. However, once it moved to other locations, it could take over. And typically, it would push out and strangle all the other organisms that would normally live there. In this picture, you can see other trees that used to be living in this ecosystem are now covered in kudzu. And eventually those other trees will be strangled to death and will die. Let's look at another wonderful example. 
over-exploitation of resources. Humans have traditionally felt that it is our right to use whatever resource is put on this land. If we need a rock or metal, we would dig huge holes, mining pits, and remove all of that material to go use for our own purposes, scarring the landscape permanently. This graph over here shows how many Atlantic cod were caught every year since 1850 all the way up until the year 2000. And you can see that humans slowly got better and better at better at catching fish until around the 1960s when we got much better. And we fished nearly four times as many cod as we did just a few years before. However, because we pulled so many fish out of the ocean, their population dropped significantly and only very few are caught today. We are over exploiting the resources of the ocean and the land. The last example of an anthropogenic change is climate change, one that you've probably heard a lot about. We know that by burning fossil fuels and adding carbon dioxide to our atmosphere, we're causing the earth to warm, and this is causing major changes to ecosystems far and wide across the land. The major problem here is that we don't actually know precisely what the effect of climate change is going to be. You would think that if it were gonna get warmer, it would get warmer evenly across the world. However, as you can see by this map, this is predicting how much rain there will be in various places around the world. Any of the yellow and brown colors are places that will get significantly less rain, and anything that's in the dark blue will get significantly more rain. And so you can see how splotchy this map is, showing that there is going to be widespread differences all around the world. Some places will be in extreme drought, while other places will flood. So, as we've illustrated, humans are having a large impact on our planet. It's not just that the planet is hurting, it's that humans themselves are hurting because of these changes. Humans depend on healthy ecosystems. We call this dependence ecosystem services. When there is more biodiversity, it means that humans can benefit from more ecological services. So humans benefit from a wide variety of ecological services, from having food and clean water and resources to build our homes, but we also rely on lots of other things, such as the bacteria that help our soil to be healthier, to grow more food, and cooler temperatures brought on by trees. Other things that ecosystems do would be to store excess carbon. It's not just the food and water that we get from an ecosystem, it's also the location and resources and the combination of all of those things together that help us to live a sustainable life. Now, sustainability means to live in balance with what the earth can produce. There are areas of critical concern that if we don't change right now, will cause a complete collapse of our environment. This week, I'd really like you to focus on what impact humans are having on the ecosystem and how we can design solutions that reduce those impacts. Keep in mind that it is up to us, both adults and students, to figure out ways that we can prevent these problems from occurring. So that's all for this week. Feel free to click on this link right down here below if you would like to listen to this final outro song. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful summer. Playwright.